Hey everybody, and welcome back to the stream. My name is Full Q Developer, and I share my apps coming to life with you all. And I'm so excited you could be here today. It's MLK Day. And it's important to remember just how much he was for uh, labor rights and the rights of workers, as much as he's seen as like a civil rights icon or a black icon or a preacher. Um, he also talked a lot about uh, sharing the wealth, uh, making sure everyone was okay, um, and it's his day. So there you go. Uh, let's see. So uh, last week, we kicked off our first community um, explore in the community, and let's see. Uh, looks like we don't have any pull requests. Um, that's okay. Uh, we do have one fork though. Let's see. Uh, Leaf. Uh, Leaf forked it. Um, he didn't make a pull request, so I'm not gonna not gonna spoil anything. He's not ready to show. Um, yeah. So there was a. We were doing some code generation stuff on stream, and I thought it'd be fun to see how other folks would solve it. And there's tests. Um, to show that you got it right. But currently you can see the tests are failing. Um, and yeah, that's, uh, I guess that's that for the Let's Explore. I guess we'll check in again. Um, man, I don't like this plugin. I have like a tasks plugin in Obsidian and it's, it's like doing some weird stuff. I'm gonna try to disable it real quick actually. Let's see, let's go to preferences. Let's go to preferences and then community plugins and disable tasks. There we go. Here we go. Now it just crosses it out. <laughs> I don't need the date. It's all, it's all for today. Cool. So I also wanted to show off. Um, I started logging some stuff about tech, about iOS. Um, and this was inspired by someone in Discord. They were asking me about responsive design, but didn't know exactly what it was called. So I started writing, and all of a sudden, a blog post length Discord post uh, jumped out. So I'm calling them tech notes. Um, I'm sharing what is responsive design, kind of three ways to approach it. And then I share three things that I've done personally. Um, and of course, one final tip, there's always an always a see more button um, and knowing exactly when to cut and do a see more is an art, not a science. I I kind of liken it to butchering. If you ever, <laughs> ever watch like butchering videos of like how a butcher takes down a cow and cuts it into different steaks or different roasts, um, it's like, why do they put this muscle with that muscle? what's the what's the art there what's the reasoning and i feel like that's like each app is going to be different each app you want to show more of something or less of something at on each screen um i guess like itunes let's see if we can show what itunes does if we have an artist on itunes uh this is who we're listening to right now um, they give you two lines of text. Oh, they only have two lines of text for this guy. This guy doesn't have any lines of text. Okay. Uh, well, I guess we'll use an iTunes example another time. Um, but I guess in the Underway app, the idea is to show as much as possible um, up front to reduce the number of taps that the user needs to do. So it needs to be very, kind of very laid out. Um, and I wanted to show how I put together the blog. It's using um, Astro.js and of course it's open source because that's how you get free hosting on GitHub. 
Uh, so if we go to github.com, full Q developer, full, uh, let's have to look through it. It's not going to autocomplete repositories. Wow, I'm up to 27 already. Right here at the top. Thank you for whoever started. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's in Astro. Astro is a static site generator uh, in JavaScript. Um, there's many static site generators out there that I've used in the past, like uh, Jekyll and Ruby. Um, I even started writing my own using uh, Vapor's Leaf templating engine. Um, but it turns out I'm not, I'm not primarily a web developer. I'm primarily an iOS developer. So I found out I don't have as much to say when it comes to static site generators as um, people who do this kind of with more enthusiasm, with more commitment than me. So, and then I found Astro and it was a, it was a match made in heaven. It's, it uses uh, JSX for the templating. Uh, so I guess React style or Vue style. Um, you can see like uh, on my homepage, I have the base layout with a title. And that is, let's go to the homepage. That's the title there. And then everything else is inside that base layout. You get this nice, um... oh, I think actually this title is just for the metadata. This is the actual H1 that we see. Um, but yeah, you get this nice sort of React-like, Vue-like, I mean, it's called JSX. You get this JSX templating um, in your HTML and it looks, it looks fantastic. Um, in Nova here, the editor I'm using, uh, you can command click into stuff. So you can see my actual base layout is I have HTML. I have a footer, which I, I guess I show at the bottom. I have a body with some colors. Uh, and yeah, here's where I put the title that we pass in. And then slot. This slot is a special element for, you guessed it, that's where the, that's where the content slots in. So all this stuff here, everything inside of base layout, uh, it's put into here um, at compile time. And because it's a static site generator, uh, yeah, I guess it's best to just show uh, there we go. So here's the workflow on GitHub. And again, this is all open source on my uh, GitHub, so you can check it out yourself. So whenever I push to trunk, you run a job. It's on Ubuntu latest, which has Yarn and Node and all that already installed. I just need to say Yarn install to install Astro. Yarn build, which will build the website. And then I use the GitHub Pages action to publish it to the GitHub Pages branch, which is how GitHub Pages works. So, uh, I want to show you off the, that's the sort of the intro to Astro, that's the basics. Um, and I wanted to show off uh, what I'm doing for these tech notes. Because I need a place to like write longer length things um, more publicly. So I have it by folder. Um, I guess my thinking for this is, I mean, this is what I do for my personal journaling is you do it just by by day if you like put it all in the beginning 2023 uh, there we go i mean you're just gonna end up with like if you're 
you're going to end up with like 100 or more uh, files really fast. And that's going to be really tough to sort through. Um, so if we keep it like this, then at most we have like 30, 30 in a row. And then the day is also a folder so that like any images that go in here or if I have more than one for that day, um, it's fine. <laughs> uh, and then I have the index. which is what's linked to from, I guess at the bottom, there's gonna be a link for next and previous. I've only have one right now, so just have a link up to tech notes. And this doesn't look that impressive right now because there's only one, it doesn't really feel like a full page. It's just all footer right now. And my footer needs to update too, as I'm looking at this. <sighs> a lot of things could be better, that's true but I'm focusing now on what we have that's good. Um, and what I wanted to show off here was Oh, this is this is wrong. This should be um notes, not keyboards. But that's just a variable name. It doesn't quite matter. So we glob everything all the markdown files and subfolders here. We just grab all of them in a glob. Then we loop through them and we show this page. Um, now that's cool and all, but I think when it gets really exciting is I have the layout for tech notes. And here, um, do the same thing, we, we glob everything. This is to get the, the next and previous links. We glob everything, we find the index of our current note in the list of all notes, and we get the previous one, and we get the next one. And these will be null if, if they don't exist, which is fine because we default them to null and only create a title and URL if it exists. And then we just pass it up to our markdown layout. Uh, put the pass in the previous link, the next link, and a link up to home. Uh, and this is because I have kind of multiple blog style things on this website, and I want to reuse this markdown layout. I wish it would stop opening down there. Let's see, let's close this down here. I'm not really using it anyway. So then again, here's base layout once again. So it's all wrapped in the basic wrapper for the entire website. And then I have the, now this is a Tailwind plugin for pros. Um, so the, the content comes in here Pros, Pros Inc. That's the, the text color. Here's the container. Here's the main body. And then down here is the footer. Again, we're doing it the same width, the max width for readable pros. It's so nice that they provide that for you. We have uh, two links if they exist for previous and for next. Currently, since I only have one, uh, they don't exist. Um, but I can show it to you on my keyboard a keyboard blog. See, there's the previous and the next right there. Ooh, and this is, ooh, that's, that's, <laughs> I updated to say next, but the arrow is pointing in the wrong direction. Okay, I guess I got a little excited when refactoring, so I need to, I need to tweak that real quick. Let's see if that helped. Oh, this is this is on .com. Okay, so let me start the server locally. So that's going to be yarn dev. Uh, 
Oh, it's not 3,000, it's 3,001. I wonder if I have something running already. I probably do. Yeah, so if I go into here, just click on some random one. Yeah, there we go. Now we have the arrows pointing in the right direction. Cool, so that's a little intro on how you can build your own blog with previous and next links and have markdown um, for your for your own blog. And I guess I should commit that uh, real quick. Next arrow pointing in the right direction. And what was the change here? It's a variable rename. Now I tried to make this even more generic. Um, let's see, let's go ahead and push that so that GitHub can deploy it automatically. I tried to make this more generic. As you can see that this tech notes layout and let's close close other tabs. This tech layout is globbing and then getting the next ones and previous ones. Keyboard layout is basically doing the same thing. It's globbing and then getting the previous ones and next ones. Um, I was trying to uh, refactor this even further. However, this glob thing uh, in JavaScript needs to be, you can't pass a variable into here. Uh, and that's across um, many different projects have that problem in JavaScript. Uh, it's really disappointing. Um, I wonder if I could like pass in the result of this glob uh, up to the markdown layout. Um, yeah, just a few places where it's nice to use a language like Swift for my most of my stuff. Um, now, I did want to make it easier for me to um, make a new post because right now I have to look up the day and then maybe copy this because there's like all kinds of things in here. So I wanted to do a little bit of templating. And as you know, I love uh, Swift, as I just mentioned. And I do have a task runner in Swift named Swish. So I wanted to uh, I wanted to try to do that here. So, so there's no Swish folder yet here. So we can do a swish dash, I think it's i for init. And that'll just scaffold uh, kind of an empty swish project here, which all it does is print the date. Uh, let's see if we can run it to show. So just saying swish shows the available targets and we can say swish date. And that'll compile it and run it. And it doesn't do anything exciting. I think it just prints the date. Yeah, it decodes the date from, from running this on the command line and prints it. Yeah, interprets it as a time interval, creates a date from time interval, and just runs print. It's just uh, sample code. Uh, so let's change this. We want this to be a a new tech note. So let's see. Can I say can I say tech note here? I don't know if I'm allowed to say use dashes in a target in Swift. So I'm about to find out. Well, didn't didn't not compile. Okay, it looks like it ran. Okay, that's great. Because I know I can't do an I can't import tech note because um, it has a dash in it, but that's okay because it's an executable target. Okay, so what do we want to do? We want to uh, we want to scaffold. Um, we want to make some directories. 
Let's see. So yeah, let's make uh, let's make some notes about what we need to do. Uh, uh, current date, uh, and then create folders with it. Uh, create uh, empty post. And I think that's it for now. Yeah, I'm not doing any abstracts. Um, yeah, so I guess we can say let now equals date. And then I guess we need to get the calendar components. So I think we need a, let's see, we just did this like uh, a few days ago on stream. Uh, when we were doing the escalator and elevator alerts. So I might yoink my own code. So let's open up uh, tilde slash Android dev. Android is, of course, my subway app. Um, and we are working on the elevator and escalator alerts for the subway stations in New York City. And let's see where that was. Let's see. Let's look for a date. No, command shift F. Date components. This is creating a date from a date component. Uh, where was I uh, pulling it apart? Here we go. That's exactly what I want to yoink. So we were using this code to show uh, nice relative dates for the escalator and elevator alerts. And you know, let's open this in Xcode so we get better um, autocomplete help. So let's uh, open up the Swish folder in Xcode. And if we, why is it trying to run it on my phone? It thinks it's being so helpful sometimes. Um, let's see, let's option click, no documentation, so it's not compiling. Give me autocomplete. Okay, there we go. We don't care about the minute or day or week of year, um, like we did when we were showing uh, a date to a user. This is just um, dates for uh, making some directories. Now these are all optional on the components, uh, that's fine. They're going to be there. We're just gonna throw a fatal error if they're not because something must be, <laughs> something must be really bad if, uh, <laughs> if we can't get current date. Uh, couldn't get date components. So then we want to make some directories. So that's going to be something like uh, day slash. Oh, actually, year. Month uh, day. Uh, 
and then we can say uh, file manager dot d oops default dot create directory at path with intermediate directories true and that can throw and we'll just let it we'll just let it throw if it can't do it um let's see is that the right path it actually might not be let's head back to nova so because one of the nice things about swish is i know that it's all going to be running from this directory so it's actually source pages tech notes slash all that stuff let's see can we copy a relative path we can so let's head back over to xcode we can say a new file um now how should we do the file name we probably want to get that in from either the command line or prompt the user which is going to be myself um Yeah, let's get it from the because I think what I think what'll be nice is if we say like swish uh tech note uh responsive design uh something like that. And I guess in blogging they call that the slug. Uh as you can see. Where is it? This is what the URL is going to be made out of. Oh yeah, we also want to say like, yeah, there's a there's a lot here we want to take in. Well, we're going to start with the slug because that's that's going to be the file name. Oh hey, look, I have a underscore here, but a dash. Okay, I wonder what it is. Um, I wonder if the slug overwrote the, okay, let's go home, the slug overwrote the underscore. It did. You can see in the bottom there we have a dash there. Okay, interesting. I do want to keep them in sync though, so I'm going to stick with that rename. Um, yeah, that's weird. Let's save the other one there too. Okay, now get now get knows what's going on. Okay, so what is next? Um, got the current date to create the folders. Um, I guess these are let's actually checkbox. There we go. Now we can check it off. So we want to create empty post to get but to create an empty post, we need to first uh, prompt for file name. So let's head back to Xcode. And I guess if we don't specify a file name, we'll just fail. So let's go ahead and do that first. See, so this is going to be command line dot arguments dot. So it's not actually the first one, I believe. Um, yes, we can see what comes in. Error. Please pass in the file name as the first argument. And let's go ahead and print the arguments to see exactly how it comes through because I don't remember exactly how I did this and you'll get to see how it is too. Let's see. 
oh right okay yeah let's comment this out so the the error it's giving is that this array indexing into this array doesn't give an optional it either crashes or gives you the string so yeah let's comment this out for now so we compile and let's print the command line arguments so swish uh what did we call it uh tech note let's say arst yes yeah, so we got the Oh, this, this is the built target. Okay, I got it. The built target that it ran, the binary, and then the first argument. Okay. So we want to, instead of say that, this comes out here. Um, I'll say let uh, inline dot arguments that count we'll say it must equal two so now that we have a file name uh, we can go ahead and print it out Cool, so we don't need this print anymore, and we can see did it create anything. Oh, we need to zero pad these. Okay. So it made the directories, but they were the wrong name. Let's move those to the trash. Yeah, let's go ahead and not do the actual creation now. Um, how do we do zero padding? Uh, see swift zero pad int oh okay I'll take that suggestion let's do it with a format uh, I was hoping there's another way to do it oh there's another <laughs> The number formatter. I guess. And how do we use it again? We say minimum integer digits. Okay. String for any. Yeah, so this is getting a bit of an eyeful here. We might want to pull some of this stuff out. Oh, and what's your problem? Well, here I think I, I can just um, force unwrap. Um, this is a script. If there's a problem, uh, like we know that dates are going to be normal numbers that can be added. We don't actually have to worry about that. Okay, so before we start cleaning up, let's make sure this works. And they should have basically done nothing because this already exists. Um, 
Okay, but let's make it um, create an empty post now. And let's see, how do we want to sketch that out? Um, So it'll have an empty title. It's going to use the same layout. It's going to have the year, the month string, and the day string. And then it's going to have the Yeah, we need to call this the the slug because the file name is going to have the dot md extension and uh we don't <laughs> we don't want to have that show up here this is the, I guess, the file contents. And we need to write this to file. Um, the file contents dot write to URL to file. So this is going to be um, redirectory path plus slug plus uh, dot md atomically true dot utf8 and I believe that can throw and we didn't even hit 50 lines <laughs> um, cool so let's let's try running this oh we even have some space here we can buy back Let's extract this as a variable so that but we can print it to the screen more easily. Oh, oops. There we go. New directory path plus the slug plus md. And we see that it has a slash here. Um, remove the slash and put it inside of here. Um, not sure it matters. I guess this way shows that we didn't forget it. Because the slash kind of hiding at the end there might be might be confusing if we got it or not. Uh, yeah, but that's going to be it. So this will so make the file for us. And yeah, let's try it out. Swish uh, tech note ARST. And let's see if it got created. Let's hop over to Nova. There it is with the layout and all that jazz. Beautiful. That is done. So let's, uh, let's commit all this. Uh, I don't have a new blog post right right now, but now I'll be ready to do it. Uh, swish uh, script to scaffold new tech note. And that's important to me that I did that because I have some, maybe some new projects coming along that might want to use that. And what is this? 
Yeah, we want to add that to our git ignore. So where is it? Under here. Wait, did that get committed? Uh, oops. <laughs> okay, let's close uh, Xcode. And then let's delete that file. And add it to the git ignore xc user data. And I guess that's a, I should add that to my task manager, huh? Let's see, let's close all this. New folder for sh. New note for tasks. And drag this out here. So I guess we have uh, for sh. Um, crap! What did I just say? Oh yeah. Nor fix the user data. In init script function. Not really a script in init functionality when initting. Fresh install and just when initting, I guess. Uh, the other task from the other day that I didn't put in here is sh doesn't handle long running tasks. Most importantly, uh, control plus C doesn't kill the long running process. <sighs> okay. So with that all set aside, I'm going to take a five minute break and we'll get going on FQ auth. Be right back.
Hey, welcome back. Got a bunch of stuff done early already. I sort of walk through um, updates to the blog and how I've set it up. Um, let's turn our attention now to um, FQ auth. And that is a link from the homepage. Talk about the goals of the project, making something easy to set up. And all the current work is done on the initial branch, uh, which is what I have checked out here. And this is exactly where we want to be. So we're working on the server to server notifications today. And uh, let's see how it goes. We're getting an unauthorized. Um, oh, rewind. We have our server to server notification request tests. And these are supposed to simulate Apple sending the server payload of notifications about uh, the sign in with Apple accounts that have authenticated with Apple from this app. And there's uh, a few different notifications that it could send. And I will try to show that. Yeah. So get a notification when someone has signed in with Apple with your app, but then they have enabled their email or disabled their email. They have revoked consent, like they're saying, like, I'm no longer logged in with you. And then finally, if they just deleted their whole Apple ID. So those are the four notifications that Apple sends. And I have a test to, uh, not this one, this one. So this test simulates um, the URL that we've given to Apple to send us notifications to, it simulates Apple sending uh, payloads to us. So currently we're failing at um, consent revoked. Uh, so that must mean that I'm guessing is that this isn't exactly signed correctly, so it thinks that it's not coming from Apple. Um, and this was a, an actual notification that I recorded from Apple um, to make sure I got it right. And uh, yeah, so I'm guessing that it's just something about the signing the JWT that needs to be fixed. We set up the Halo JSON. We wrapped it in a notification body. We've encoded it, and then we do a test post to our notify endpoint. And we're asserting that it's okay, which is, that's the contract. As long as Apple gets an okay back from us, it knows that it's Okay, and it won't send the notification again. I believe that's the contract. So somewhere inside of here, um, something's breaking. So let's look into there. So we have the sign in with Apple controller. We have the notify endpoint. And we have the, note, we have the decode request. And I'm guessing we're failing right here at this JWT verify. Because if we do, uh, let's see, request dot uh, jwt dot. Oh, there is no unverified. Oh no, there is. May not be available in this context. Uh, oops, that's too many quotes.
yeah, this doesn't quite exist. So we kind of have to do a little bit of hoop jump in here um, in our tests to let us have a fake um, request. So we did that before on a when we were doing the authorized tests. Um, let's see if I can show it. Yeah, we made our own little verifier object to verify, and then we can inject in a fake one that'll say that it's is verified no matter what um, for the sake of testing and only for the sake of testing. Um, So I think we're going to have to do something like that again. Um, can we use the same one that we were using before? Because I guess they're both coming from Apple, right? Yeah, this checks it with Apple. Um, and is, is this gonna be there all the way kind of down at the bottom? Uh, let's see, let's hop into here. So let's delete this, AGBT verify. Verify, verify, maybe do signers verify. So somewhere there should be a yeah, this header um, key ID. If we can put a breakpoint here and see what we get. So let's run the test and see if we hit that breakpoint. Oh, we didn't hit that breakpoint. Let's uh, try one maybe not so deep. Let's see, maybe it's one of these. Oh, let's start somewhere more shallow. So we got to here. No, we failed. So it's not hitting either of these. Oh, so this is right here. Okay, so let's see if we hit there. We do. Okay. Let's scoot ahead two lines to, oh, don't fail me now. Wasn't able to get that header. Okay, let's run the test again. Stopping here. Okay, cool. Malformed JWT. What is so malformed about it? Um, notification body dot payload. I believe that is the JWT. This is a string. And this takes a string, right? Yeah, this takes a string. So what is malformed about it? Um, Yeah, 
Yeah, sometimes these backslashes get escaped and sometimes they get unescaped. Let me see what uh, Apple thinks is happening. Yo, uh, payload JSON. I can't quite tell. It's like so many backslashes in there. Yeah, that's just calling description. I want to call it print on this. Yeah, see, when we print, those backslashes go away. Now if I put the um, hashtags back in, the octothorps, whatever you want to call it, um, that's just supposed to make it sort of an exact copy, like don't interpret anything. Um, let's see. Yeah, I believe this is what we had. I believe this is what we need because... Um, I think we do need to escape these quotes. Oh, I mean, I guess there's no header here for one. This is the payload of the payload, not the full JWT. Oh, no, wait, this is, this has everything. What am I talking about? This does have everything. Um, so then, what's the problem? Let's see, let's write down what we've learned so far. Let's move this down to the bottom. Let's see, JWT is uh, malformed. Uh, let's see what we uh, what we tried, I guess. Confirmed that quotes are correctly escaped. So let's take that colon off. It's just to give more space here. see I guess this doesn't have a header right so if we go to like a JWT website yeah like we could we could paste this in we don't have uh, we don't have this stuff in here A 
let's see. And if I take out these backslashes, yeah. So it needs those backslashes, but for sure, the whole thing just explodes if we don't have them. Okay, so I think I need the header and the verify signature. Okay, so that's what's going wrong. Um, Okay, so how are we going to do that in a test? So this is just the... Just the payload. Um, let's see. So I think this is the... Uh, Do I have a type for this already? Yes, I do. So we need to make one of these. Maybe not um, a raw string. See, let's get some spacing in here. Uh, looks like I need to import uh, JWT kit. How do I make one of these? Ooh, still doesn't like it. Let's look at this issued at claim. It's a date. Okay. Let's see. So this will be a date. Uh, I believe it's time interval since 1970. And why won't this? Uh, Okay, there we go. Now it's doing what I want. Maybe this, we could have it um, as a string. See, let's also add a few other initializers here to make this easier for us. Uh, 
I guess it's Yeah, I guess it's this here. Oh, I guess which means this needs to throws. Okay, let's see if that helps. There we go. Oh, and what's your problem? Not convert value of type string to expected type. And I think we can solve this with um, uh, protocols, actually. Um, extension. You can say this is uh what's it called literal expressible by string literal that's what i want to say Oh, because this can throw. Uh, yeah, that's a little bit of a wrinkle. Yeah, let's not do this. So I guess it's not exactly expressible by. Um, yeah, so let's go ahead and knit from string and wrap a try around that. And now it's going to need us to specify a generic type, I hope. Oh, no, because it's going to be implied going to be implied by this. Okay. Now I have the notification. So notification body is not this. Verify, I want you to um, do the signing thing. So is this a string? What does this return? Let's return a string, perfect. Cool, so now we'll get, I think, at least a different error. Given data was not valid JSON. No string key for value in object. Data corrupted. Ooh. Oh, oh, I think I can take out. the backslashes here. Well, 
Well, hey, we got a little bit further. Let's see where we fail now. Yeah, perfect. Uh, so here we want the, I guess we want to pretend that this is Apple. This is actually, oh, we could make a fake Apple key here just so that it's, no, we still we still need to have it be unverified because we have a issued at claim. I guess we could we could tweak that, I guess. Let's see, what identifiers do we have? Yeah, we could try self-signing it. Just for the sake of the test. It doesn't feel great. I feel like we want like a test one. <sighs> An unprivate key. Um, do we not have it in? Okay, well we're done with the website stuff for for now. Let's open up. Um, yeah, let's do. Let's go to uh, cd dot dot slash fkey auth. Oh, it didn't work. Oh, I've cd twice. Open up Nova. Uh, here's some diagrams. See. We do have the auth private key there. It's all just throwaway keys. I don't care if they show up on stream or whatever. Uh huh. I called app configure. Um which should set up the signing. Yeah, call configure signing. Use auth private. So why won't it sign? Why won't it sign? Oh, it's because I'm making a fresh one. Uh -huh. uh, let's see, app dot uh, jwt dot signers dot sign. Let's try this one. Oh, we got bad request. Okay, so how far did we get into the request? Oh, thank you so much for the follow, National Rebel. Really appreciate it. Welcome to the community. So I'm going to put a breakpoint in the request and see uh, where it got cranky, I guess. Um, yeah, let's just run it, see what happens, and then let's try to fix it. Okay, so we didn't blow up yet. So let's try to, let's, let's see what happens when we run this in the debugger. Okay, we got a future. What happens when we wait? It was able to decode something. Okay. 
So then if we proceed, here I cannot find a uh, notification body in scope. Uh, well, thanks. Thanks, debugger. That is just wonderful. Um, let's see. Let's let's try extracting some variables. See if that helps. Let's go ahead and restart the test. And yes, we have the breakpoint there. Let's take a look at the payload, I suppose. Does this look like a JWT? Yep, we got the dots. Okay, so now if we try to run this ourselves in the debugger, We get key not found. No value associated with key type. Looking for a type? Um, let's head back over to here. Oh yes, I guess it needs this. Ah, scrolling too much. There we go. Does it not have this um, algorithm stuff? Let's go ahead and drop this string into this website. And it has the key ID. It seems like it has a type, or maybe this website is just filling it in. Let's see, so it's 384. We paste it in, it changes it to five cells. So this is decoded. This is exactly what we put in in our test data. And hey, look, it escaped the backslashes for us. Oh, well, we are getting invalid signature. What is with that? Oh, um, we configure signing. We also need to configure the auth public key. Uh, let's see if that makes a difference. So let's start the test again. Hmm, we didn't seem to hit the breakpoint. Oh, because this doesn't exist. Okay. Have the identifier. I feel like this is not quite right. Let's 
see what happens when I run when I generate a new key. Yeah, so this has both keys in it, right? Oh, okay. Yeah, something's not sitting right with me about that. We have the key ID, we have the type, we have the algorithm. Saying the signature is invalid though. I'm not sure what that's about. Maybe I need to tweak the issue at. Let's just say the date is now. Let's see if that helps. Oh, yeah, let's uh, just delete this stuff. I don't think this is correct. Okay, so for starters, let's print this payload. And let's drop it into this website again. Still getting invalid signature. Hmm. Other parameters does this take? Type of JWT, yeah, that's fine. Payload and the identifier, okay. Now that I know I'm using the right um, signers, let's try it without specifying an ID. Still invalid. If I just pop this in here, I can always just um, recreate this.
Nope, still invalid. <sighs> hmm. What's going on? What do I not understand? Well, let's uh, rewind a little bit. Okay, so we have a correctly formed JWT. Uh, JWT is... Well, I guess we didn't actually get the error yet. Let's step over one to get the error. Oh, oh shoot, this might be nothing about JWTs at all. Um, but I guess we do have two. Um, and then let's say, what, what do we want to try? Ensure type field is present. And so let's go ahead and head over here. Now, do we have any tests around this? We have request tests, we have decoding tests. Interesting. Um, yeah, I guess this doesn't have a type field. Do I have an ID key here? Yeah, event type. Let's actually put this at the top. Oh, maybe these should be public as well.
Now when we encode, oh, it's because we don't have an in custom encode function. Uh, that might be what it is. Uh, fascinating. Okay, this is okay. This is really interesting. Yeah, so it looks like this was this was the right thing to tug on. So let's see how far this goes. Copy value. Let's see, let's copy this. Okay, and then if we copy this, we actually don't have anything in our paste buffer. Okay, so we do need to print out the description and copy it. Okay, still getting an invalid signature. Um, Still not getting the type there. So let's go ahead and so we need to make notification uh, encoding tests, I guess. Yeah, I, I didn't think I would need to be uh, encoding these, but for testing, it seems like it's going to be really useful. <coughs> Sorry about that. So let's go ahead and... Um, I guess this should be a new file, sure. I'm going to copy this file name, so I don't have to type all of that. And I'm going to copy this so I don't have to copy all of that as well. Now let's start with that. And let's see what's next. I guess we can take the one from our other test and see how far we can get. Since this is the problem, this is the test we need to write. Oh, and I guess we need to start up the app so we have access to all this. Let's copy that as well. and import JWT kit. Uh, and I guess what we want to do is verify this and see what we get. See, so let's assert equal that the uh, decoded dot not 
what I was expecting to get. I was expecting to get one of these. failed. The key associated with that. Yes, yeah, so this is the error we're getting and now we have it isolated. So now we can go about fixing this test. So we have a custom decoder. Let's make a custom encoder. Um, exactly what I was expecting, I guess. Let's see, so notifications. So this is on event, yeah. Oh, I see. Okay. Because this is in the new... Yeah, we just want to switch on ourselves. Wow, well, I was hoping it would give me autocomplete there. Let's try one more time. Oh, come on. Yeah, I think this is what I want to do. I think this is the way. Of course, this can throw. And now do we get an autocomplete? We do. Thank you.
Okay, head back to the encoding tests and run it again. Audience claim verification failed, not intended for. Right, because we're self signing, so. Maybe this should be uh, unverified. Ah, <sighs> we have a passing test. We're on the right path. Um, kind of want to see if I can make this be the time interval since 1970 again. And since it's unverified, I think this shouldn't change anything. Yeah, okay. Let's go ahead and make a few more asserts. So you'll make this XCT unwrap. And then make some asserts on that. Oh, and this needs a try. Uh, decoded event dot uh, subject, I guess. It's going to be this thing. And I guess there's only one other thing on there. So let's see. Uh, decoded um, event dot event time is an issued at claim dot value is a date and because it's uh yeah i think we can just do a cert equal here and it says i'm missing a Close print and it is correct. Cool. We have our encoding test. So this is all all done. So I guess I guess we'll delete those notes because we're gonna get possibly a new failure for our request test, which is the one that we're working on. Okay, we had our breakpoint. Um, let's print this description and see if it's any different. Still getting invalid signature. Just failed. What was the problem? Unauthorized. So it is verifying on the audience. So let's fix that and keep going. Oh, we got past it. Wonderful. Uh, so let's go ahead and 
commit what we have. Uh, so we added um, encoding for server-to-server uh, -server notifications. We can say we needed that for the sake of testing. Cool, so we should be hitting this breakpoint here. Wonderful. And we get test succeeded, which is a lie because we're not really doing anything. We're just hitting this return at the end here. Um, but that's fantastic. We've got, we've got movement, we've got motion. Yeah, so we committed that. Um, so now we need to like do some implementing about what should happen on consent revoked. Where's B? There it is. Uh, so there's a couple options. Well, <laughs> I guess for starters, we want to, I guess, on cue a background test. And then we'll move towards, uh, I guess, testing the background task instead of instead of the request. And I guess actually that's that's pretty elucidating. That's that like really focuses what we're doing here. Okay, I <laughs> kind of forgot about background queuing and all that stuff. Um, let me take a quick break and we'll continue on with this.
everybody welcome back hope your afternoon is going wonderfully um yeah so for the server to server notifications uh we need to enqueue a background job um so i guess we need to create these uh create these jobs uh and queue them and I guess like assert that they got created. Um, I guess what I'm doing here is I'm making sure that the, the ID exists already before on queuing something. Uh, let's see. So I guess for the queuing, we'll need to configure Redis. Um, and I guess we can make another thing for configure queues. This will be extension on application. And I need to look at some documentation for this. So let's head over to docs.vapor.codes, get down to, no, nope. uh, it's not in the Redis here. Maybe under advanced, yeah, here we go. starters we need to say oh this is a uh, self um, let's see what else can we do to clarify what we're doing here um, set up use uh, for background tasks and we can make this a task. This is all kind of uh, one breath we're kind of doing together all at once. Um, we're kind of doing this in support of doing this. Uh, let's see, how do I get the Redis configuration? register a job okay that's fine um because i'm trying to figure out the type that we need uh here the command click onto and click onto okay let's see if we can import something uh import Okay, so now this is green or whatever. Now can I come in and click? No, come in and click here. Yes, okay. Here's queues. Now how do I use queues? There's a queues configuration. Let's see, is there a use function here? Use a provider. What is this provider? Oh, it's kind of this injectable thing. Okay. Hmm. 
not that interesting. Let's see, can we say, we can give it a Redis configuration, or we can give it a Redis URL. Can I grab the Redis configuration that we have already? Not convert. Oh, 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 wait. Can I do this? Ah, uh, value of optional. So if I just force unwrap it for half a second, Oh, we can do that. Okay. Uh, probably should do a little guard here. And this is just something that shouldn't happen, but we will. Mark it. And actually, let's see. Uh, I'll first I'll write the message, then we'll change the variable names. Um, uh, configure uh, Redis before configuring queues. caps it and let's name this uh Redis config there we go okay so we have a redis configuration we can command b to build what else do we need to do to Oh, I guess we need, do we have this thing in our dependencies, the Redis queues driver? Let's take a look at our package.swift. Oh, we have it here already, wonderful. Uh, what else do we need to do? Registering a job. After modeling a job, you must add it to your configuration section. So do I need to register the, is this just registering the job or is this scheduling the job? Oh, it looks like it's registering because here it dispatches it. Yeah, so then here's the scheduled jobs, which are not the background jobs. And these we schedule directly. Okay, I get it now. Um, Where should we store these? Uh, well, it is part of signing with Apple. Um, this notification. Yeah, so maybe you'll make a jobs folder here. We can call this one, I guess, consent revoked. Uh, 
Now, the example, are these structs or are they destruct? Or are they classes? Destruct. Okay. And it inherits from So here it's straight from job, okay. And then let's go ahead and is that payload K? Yeah, so when we do the consent revoked, it's going to be just on an Apple ID, right? Um, Do I need to say dot type there? It's just the UUID. Okay, so now how do I uh, how do I kick this off again? We dispatch it. Okay. Let's copy this paste. How do I get the ID here? And it's okay, not that we're done. Does this need to be a flat map? Because <laughs> mm, this one's, this is okay. So let's see, if I comment this out, comment this out, I compile. Yeah, so the problem is something about having another um, indirection on the event loop here.
Now if I build again, I'm gonna get a build failure. It's gonna be saying something's wrong up here. Um, it has to do with something about the types here. Let's see, if I change this to a map, because this dispatch, this is in event loop future, right? Hmm. It's uh, it's not exactly telling me. Let's see. One thing I could do to protect myself a little bit is to put these into uh, helper functions. Handle consent oh, and this will be a that loop future HTTP status, which is what Apple is expecting back when it sends us a server to server uh, notification. Uh, I guess we'll need to pass in. Oh, this is this is totally the wrong one. Um, this is an account delete. I meant to do it over here. And I guess we can be a little cute. like that and oh it's a it's a nested type right so this is ooh it's very nested oh my And, oh, I guess it needs the request as well. So I'll pass in the request. Oh, right, so yeah, we can't, I see, I see, I see. Yeah, so we can't do a dot wait here. This is an event loop future on what it finds. So, so we'll fix this in a moment. Let's handle this upstairs. And I'll pass in the request. And this will be a Yeah, so there's going to be stuff to handle out here as well. Let's see, if I make this return a non-event loop future, that's going to be a total lie, but it compiles. Okay. Yeah, this flat map throwing... Let's see, let's let's try to let's try to handle this, I guess. Um because we do want this to be an event loop future. Um and these don't need to be a constant. That's fine because they're gonna be calling into things which are event loop futures. So Yeah, here's flat map throwing. It returns back in event loop future of a new value. Oh, I see, because the, um, the callback takes a specific new value, not a future new value. Okay. So 
So let's see. So if this is going to be um, request that Let's change these all to event loop to, to futures. We do that by getting the event loop of the request. We'll say it's a future um, dot okay. Yeah, so these are going to all be failing. Uh, failing, I mean not compiling. And instead of flat map throwing, let's flat map. And this is going to be no matches because this and throw. So now we have an error. So we can say request dot event loop dot make failed future with the error. And then we'll move this into the try catch. Yeah, I was hoping the flat map throwing would help um, make this a little bit nicer to look at, because now we have this catch outside here. Um, but you know what, we can move this into a, to sort of a handling function to make it look a little bit nicer. Uh, oh, and this needs a return. So this will be in event loop future HTTP status, just like the rest of them. And we'll move all of this into here. And this will be return self dot handle notification. Notification. Oh, and it'll also need the request. So let's pass that in as well. Cool. And we can make this uh, private. Cool. So now we have um, we have kind of the world set up so that we can can take care of this. Although, do we want to change the... I don't want to just say like, okay, not implemented. Ooh, there we go. Not sure what Apple does with these uh, HTTP statuses. I think it tries to resend them if you don't send back a 200. Cool. So let's try to load the model. map uh, maybe model Dot. 
So let's just say okay for now. Maybe we could find a better one in a second. I want to pop this over here and delete all of this. Oh my goodness, so this is going to be a try. Which means we're back to trying flat map throwing. Which means going back to a <laughs> do catch. This looks so gross. Uh, let's see, how do we want to format this? Um, well, I guess we're not even compiling yet, so... Not confer contextual base. Transform to dot okay, right? Nope, failed. What is the problem? Cannot confer contextual base in reference. This should be HTTP status, um, but I feel like that's not going to help. Oh, it needs a return statement here. Not implied anymore now that we're inside of an if else. Let's see, can I change this back to a map we can okay so that's the sketch for the consent revoked job and I suppose we can do this for um, all of them this file is going to get large. Let's see, so what can we do? Um, I guess I'm not so concerned about it being large right now. Um, we can always uh, split it out further once we have everything. Um, Let's go ahead and make similar methods here for the other three cases, uh, which will mean making uh, three more job classes. Although perhaps we need to write a test first for what we have so far, make sure we're going all the way through from start to finish. Um, we discover something while we're writing tests, we can incorporate it and take that knowledge forward when we do the next three. Okay, so coming back to our request test, uh, what's our current status on it? Row four not found. 
Right, because we are uh, checking that this person exists. <laughs> um, and we don't have any test data in the database because we haven't set any up. Um, let's see, I think this is a great part to commit what we have so far. Um, empty uh, job for consent revoked uh, and dispatch that job when we receive that notification from Apple. Okay. Yes, yeah, so we're queuing the background task. Let's test. Uh, we don't want to test the background task yet. We kind of want to write a test around um, and queuing this. And I guess I guess we set up the queues. We set up the job class for this one. Let's take <laughs> move that off of plural. Um, I guess it's, I guess we can kind of indent it in so that communicates uh, your dependencies better. So then for this test, um, hey, welcome back, Mazki. How's it going? Uh, let's see. So for this test, um, I guess we need a we need a user in the database already. And what else? Um, Maski says, I'm fine. How are you, my friend? I'm doing well. It's so good to see you. Just been working on co some code today for our authentication server. We have about, you know, 20 minutes left on the stream. Uh, let's see, yeah, so when it stubbed the user... <laughs> oh, Lasky says, I thought that my app is complex. Yeah, well, that's how you learn. First, you make something small, and then you make it bigger, and then you make it bigger. Next thing you know, you're making an authentication server. <laughs> I see a lot of work ahead of me, says Mosky. Um, yeah, for sure. <laughs> uh, me too. I just have so many ideas. I can't make my ideas fast enough. Um, but a lot of my ideas need an authentication server. So that's the motivation for making a reusable and open source authentication server that other people can use because I want it for my projects. Um, I completely understand you, says Muskie. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Let's see, how are we gonna assert that a job is created? We probably want to destroy the job after Creating the test also. Like, can we say app dot use dot? We can get the jobs that are configured, but how do we get what's been on in queued? Let's look back at the documentation. We have a way to dispatch. Okay, so let's say queues dot queue dot. There's that dispatch thing. 
get the next job to be run. No, we don't want that. Pop's next job in queue. Oh, that might be... Actually, actually, for the purposes of this test, this might be exactly what we want. This is an event loop future. I guess that's fine. Uh, Mosky says, sometimes I think if the day had more hours, it would be great. I know, right? <laughs> There's so much I need to do. Or I could, like, eat less or sleep less or something. Yeah, that's what they, I think that's what they mean when they say life is, life is too short. Um, like, getting experience just takes so long. And by the time you've, like, worked out your emotions, learned some interesting things, uh, got some ideas for what to make, learned how to build them. Uh, yeah, <laughs> feels like uh, feels like time flies by so fast. Um, Musky asks, "Is this vapor?" Yes, yes, this is vapor. Uh, I can show you the package .swift and see vapor is right here, right at the top, and it's a bunch of other vapor packages uh, along with one of my own. Look at that. Yeah, so we can we can pop the next job which will remove it and will let us assert that it's the right one. Okay, so that's that feels good. Um what's on next job? Has it I job identifier? Is it publisher? Hmm. How do I get the thing out of the job? This is a type that can store and retrieve jobs from a persistence layer. Oh, so it gets the, ID, gets the ID from the job, and then you grab the job data. I gotcha. Next job ID. So then we can say app.queues.q.get. Uh, next job ID dot wait. Now, what does a job data have on it? This is a wrapped uh, something or other. The wrapped. Where do I get, where do I say like as value of optional type? Oh, I guess we can um, XET unwrap. Oski says there are many things you'd like to do, but everything takes a long time. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> um, yeah, no worries. No, I really appreciate the effort you're putting into communicate even though you're saying English isn't your native language. Um, I know a little bit of many languages, uh, so... I've also been the one in the room that can't understand everything. Let's see, so this is a job data, and what does a... Uh, what does a job data have on it? Let's look at the doc, uh, source. It has a payload, the job data to be encoded. Oh, so then I decode from the data, I guess. Job name queued at. What was it called? It was called payload. Okay, so this is an array of unsigned uh, 8 bit integers. So I think this is a data. We need to figure out how to convert it and then decode it. Uh, Mosky says, thanks to Vapor, I can create a backend for my application. Uh, yeah. 
yeah, I have uh, a vapor application running in production right now for my Subway app. Um, the server for this app is is in vapor. Um, and if you go to the vapor discord, you can probably find uh, lots of other people who are doing the same thing and, and trade tips with them. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see if there's something I can show real quick. Yeah, because they have um, they have different language forums in there also. Uh, not sure if you know one of these languages or not, um, but there is there's maybe other people that are also trying to learn from a different language. Let's see. So JSON decoder dot decode type. Um, I hope this is a uh, consent revoked job. I'm not from a byte buffer, but from well, actually, can we make a make a byte buffer? Make a uh, next job dot payload. Form to decodable. Oh, um, wait, maybe it's just the payload. It failed again. Mosky says, nice. Yeah. Uh, Mosky says, your code looks very neat. Why, thank you. <laughs> yeah, my spouse uh, has also said that uh, she likes how my code looks. She says, my code looks very neat. Even though she's not necessarily a full time coder, I appreciate it. Mosky says, So you're working on this app yourself? Uh, yes. Yes. Uh, like I said, I have so many ideas and I'm just trying to make them all as fast as I can. Um, my spouse uh, contributes to um, the design of the app uh, primarily. But I'm the only coder doing the Android app, the iOS app, the back end. We have a little bit of web stuff going, um, mostly fallbacks for when people don't have the app installed. You get like a link shared to you. Um, uh, Mosky asks, and if I may know, how long did it take you to build this app? Well, we launched in, had the idea in 2013. I didn't let myself start building it until 2014. Uh, wait, no, because we launched in 2016. So I guess I started building it in 2015 and launched in 2016. Um, and I've been working on it ever since, <laughs> adding more features to it. Um, yeah, we have a we have a bunch of users. We have a bunch of subscribers and adding features and making more, <laughs> making more of them. Um, my goal is to be a full-time creator, not just like a content creator, but full-time like app creator. I have so many ideas, I, I wanna build them. And this is, this is for the Subway app, but this is separate, this is, this is FQAuth, which is the open source uh, signing with Apple server. Yeah, FQAuth, you can see right at the top here, server. So this should compile, and maybe this will fail. Um, all right, we're gonna get we're gonna get this failure again. We haven't done anything to fix this failure yet. Masi says, "I'd like to get to your level someday." 
Awesome. Yeah. I really want to support other people that want to make their own apps. Um, was there so many apps that like a big company just won't build? <laughs> um, like there's a, there's a guy I met on Discord who makes an app for finding the best oil prices for heating your home. And I think that's so cool. Um, and like with the subway in New York City, like there's a bunch of apps, right? There's a bunch of other subway apps, but mine has my particular point of view that um, hopefully, you know, resonates with more and more people. Um, and I feel like everyone has an idea for an app that is unique to them. And I really hope that they build it and I hope I can help them build it in some way. Um, Okay, so I think we have the assertion that the job is created. You need to stub a user in the database. So how are we going to do that? Um, I guess we will, I guess we will, I guess we'll use the signup repo, right? Uh, see what sign up. Sign up repo. Dot sign up. So we can just we can just make one here and we'll get the user's ID back. Uh, dot wait and we'll say try up here. And let's put these on new lines to make it easier to read. Fill these in. Um, Maski says, I once heard the phrase, don't build apps for money, build an application that will help you solve your problem. Um, Yeah, I mean, I totally agree. I mean, I, I'm more on the creative side. I am not necessarily a professional business person. Um, I just want to make things because they need to be made. Uh, Let's see, we'll use this Apple ID. We'll use this sort of fake token. And then money appears, uh, hopefully. I mean, a lot of the great artists from the Renaissance period or whatever, they never got their, um, they never got their their money in their lifetime and now they're famous painters that everyone knows everyone's seen pictures of their paintings and their paintings are worth millions of dollars um yeah i guess in the u.s there's like there's no there's no health care um for the general public everything needs money so it doesn't really incentivize being creative because if you mess up just a little bit and your app doesn't work and you get sick at the same time then <laughs> there's it's uh it's not so good <laughs> okay so we have the apple id uh, i think this might work let's go ahead and try it Oh, here we need to make this assertion as well down here. This will fail. Maski says, I'll try to come to the next live, and now I'm going to sleep. Have fun at work. Oh, thanks so much for stopping by. Have a great night's sleep. So this will be uh, user ID. 
Yes, yes, I didn't I didn't forget your name in Discord is different from your name in chat. Um you might want to try um relinking your Discord account and your Twitch account. There's a problem with Twitch's servers that I think they fixed. So it might be worth trying again. Test failed. We got all the way to here, but we got two different UUIDs out. Okay. Um, we'll try this tomorrow. Oh, cool. Yeah, have a great night's sleep. Oh, because I guess this is the this is the ID. This isn't the um payload here isn't the sign in with this isn't the user ID, this is the sign in with Apple ID. Okay. Um let's see if we can get uh SIWA model dot by Apple user ID on app dot uh, database dot PSQL and we'll wait here. This is in a test, we just want to make sure everything happens in the right order. Actually, this should be, we'll force unwrap it uh, here. Test succeeded, yes. Which means that we actually got something out of the queue. Um, Let's put our breakpoint here and see what this stuff looks like. That's so cool. So let's PO uh, next job ID. Just a UUID. And let's PO next. Oh, let's um let's go forward a little bit. Just want to see what this stuff looks like. Oh, so it gives us the job name. That's nice. I guess we can assert equal on that too. And I want to see this payload. And the CUA model payload. Cool, it matches up. It matches up. Now, maybe that's not the right ID for doing the job. We can change that later when we get to the job. Um, but we have a passing test. We have enqueued a background task and tested that we kick off a background test. Um, yeah, this is kind of a kind of a note for later. Test background task uh, on queued. Cannot find job name in scope. Oh, because this needs to be uh, next job dot job name. Go ahead and run this test one more time. Test for on queuing a background task uh, or see what consent to revoke notification. Oh, 
Cool. Well, that's just great. Oh, we got a lot done, and there's so much more left to do. Uh, what's this? Well, I guess we never quite used the user ID, huh? So this test, we create a test user, get out the model, make a notification, we do the thing, we make the request, and then we do some asserts at the end. Hmm. I feel like a bunch of this setup, we might want to move uh, elsewhere. <laughs> um, but that'll be for another time. Wait a minute. Hey, if I say command S. Okay, here we go. Uh, fix warning. Let's see. So then where does that leave us? Um, Okay, so here's where I'm doing my project management at the moment. Um, uh, I guess we need to implement the jobs. Let's see. Find job uh, on queue job test on queue in request test and then implement job. Okay, so we did these three today, and we can, I guess. Uh, And I guess, you know, test that job. We can copy these into the other ones and I guess uncheck them. If account deleted, consent revoked, and then there's two others. There was like email uh, enabled and email uh, disabled. Copy this down here as well. Okay. I guess these are kind of the same task. Um, that is okay. Well, I think that's going to be it for today. Um, I showed off my blog earlier on stream, uh, and we did a whole bunch of uh, vapor work. Thank you so much for everyone who stopped by. Um, my app is available on the App Store, uh, underway.nyc. Um, you can join me in the Discord by typing in exclamation point Discord. I have it linked from my website. Um, my website is 
fullqdeveloper.com with almost everything on the bottom and a few cool things for you to read up about. Um, I stream weekday afternoons uh, NYC time. I don't have a specific time uh, quite yet to promise um, due to uh, construction that's been going on. Um, thank you so much for watching. Please uh, like, follow, and subscribe and tell your friends and all that stuff. Uh, build your app um, and do one thing every day that an AI would never. Have a good night.